<laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm going to talk about Ember CLI Deploy. Um, but I guess first, a couple of facts about me. Who the hell am I? I don't know most of you guys. So I've been a developer for about 13 years, uh, mainly JavaScript and Ruby. In prior life, Java and then Lotus Notes, but I try not to tell too many people about that. Don't hold it against me. Um, I've been doing Ember since about May 2013. I met Jamie at uh, Ember Hack Day way back when I just first read about Ember. Sounded pretty cool. Seems like a lifetime ago now. Newly married. And as is customary for my talks, I'm, uh, you get a Noah update, father of this little fella. Noah, he's awesome. <laughs> You can't code yet, but I'm working on it. But um, <coughs> basically, uh, I wanted to talk about Ember CLI Deploy. This is just a, an Ember CLI add-on that I've just been working on. Um, it's inspired by Luke Melia's uh, talk they did at EmberConf this year called Lightning Fast Deployments of Your Rails Backed JavaScript Apps. Has anyone seen this presentation? A couple of people, not many. Um, if, if you haven't, then I'd totally recommend seeing, um, checking it out. There's a link there. I'll have it on the end of the slides as well, and uh, you can grab it uh, later on anyway. Um, just out of interest before I go on, who here has an Ember app in production? Just out of interest, about half, a bit more than half. Um, how many of those are sort of backed by Rails? So you kind of use Heroku and deploy it the way we always do. How many people use an Ember CLI or AppKit? Cool. Um, how do you guys go about deploying those sort of apps? Just out of interest. It's so a kind of a manual sort of push it up, a bit of a shell script. Uh, huh? <coughs> Divshot? Using um, Robert Jackson's add-on? Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess for me, one of the things that I wasn't really clear on is a good way to deploy. But when I watched this, um, this presentation, it really sort of made things clear. Now, we're not, I'm not strictly talking about Rails here. I don't care about Rails. I'm talking about Ember CLI. But um, I'm using sort of what the, the, the principles that Luke's talked about here. Um, in Ember CLI. So I guess basically deploying to Heroku is cool and serving from Rails, it's cool. Uh, but it can be slow, which is something that's a bit of a pain. Um, one of the things I find important. And we've been doing it for a long time. And I, I think we can do better. So <clears throat> basically the idea of, of Luke's presentation is something along the lines of this. Currently, this is my sketch uh, graphic design skill, so, so please bear with me. But um, traditionally, we have Rails app, um, and it, it will give us a bunch of HTML when we hit it uh, here, which will point to some assets, JavaScripts and CSS and images that are also hosted from the Rails server. So computer requests them from Rails, and uh, we have our, have our server-side web app. Um, if you're sort of thinking more about <coughs> um, sort of speed and caching and stuff, you might bring your assets out to something like S3. So again, we'll hit the, hit the Rails server. That'll service our starting HTML, uh, which will then point to our assets in, in S3. That's pretty standard for, for how we do, do web apps with Heroku. Um, if you're using Ember CLI currently, and maybe you're using the build pack that is described on the emberCLI.com website, it um, basically fires up an Nginx uh, web server in Heroku. So when you push to Heroku, the whole compile process builds your Ember app and then and deploys it for you. Much the same as the original sort of Rails thing here, I guess. We've got sort of just a web server giving you HTML um, and, and serving the assets. But what Luke goes to talk about is what if we sort of push it a bit further? Now that we're using JavaScript based apps, they're just static assets. Like we've got an index HTML file to bootstrap the app, which then calls for a JavaScript file and a CSS file, a few other things. So he starts to think, what happens if we, we, we put our assets on S3 like this? And instead of having like web server get a file off the file system, what if we like put the index file into a Redis database, into an in-memory store? And we just had a small express app, in my case, Express, in, in Luke's case it was Rails, um, could be a Sinatra app, anything that just pulls uh, the index HTML from, from Redis and serves it back to you. So um, now when we hit our app, our Express app just goes and gets the content because in the Embassy app, the index HTML is only tiny, it just bootstraps the app. This is the app here um, and it can point to the assets on S3. Is everyone with me so far? 
Yes. What's the advantage of that? What we do is we've got the HTML in the S3 as yep. well. What's the advantage of doing Express Print? Or that yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully get there. Um, and it's not the only way. So as I said, like this was inspired by Luke's talk. So I've started implementing that. And the idea is you can put it wherever you like. So, um, but what, let's push this a step further. Hopefully we'll start to answer your question in a little bit. <coughs> so what happens if we now um, push a branch and we store, we start to store our HTML in Redis with a key um, based on sort of the branch name. So here we'll store the current version of the HTML um, and here for my, my feature branch we'll store a different version which points to different assets because I've made some changes in my branch. What this allows us to do is we can uh, put a query <coughs> parameter on, onto the end of our production URL here and our Express app will ser serve a different index HTML file based on that query parameter. So I'll, I'll explain more about this and I'll show you a demo of what the, of what the actual add-on does. But um, what this allows us to do, it allows us to start deploying branches um, to, to an environment, maybe in production, that aren't accessible when you just access it normally. You need to pass a query parameter in, parameter in which is really cool because cutting over is literally just telling the Express server now to point to this index file instead of this one here. Does this make sense so far? So. Um, why? <clears throat> so I guess some of the th reasons I think this is cool. It's fast deployment. So Heroku takes time uh, to compile everything, to, to build everything, build the slug. Um, all we're really doing is smashing a few files together, chucking them on S3, chucking them in Redis, which is super quick to do. Um, deployment becomes super fast. Does anyone here do continuous deployment? And I mean every commit you make goes to production. Yeah. Um, this make that, makes that kind of kind of easy as well, especially if you think maybe you don't want to go continuous continuous Maybe you want to make something available every week, but you can still have your code in production running It could be tested by or accessed by your d other dev team Maybe your stakeholders want to look at it All they need to do is put a query parameter onto the end of the URL and they get served the new version of the index HTML Which then points to the new version of the assets Seamless cutover because your app's now uh, deployed to production, it's just a matter of telling Express, change uh, the, the current live one to be this other version of index HTML. <coughs> and you can start to deploy all branches. I don't know if people use branching much uh, in, their, in their dev workflow, um, but to, like I use it all the time. I deploy everything to local branches and use pull requests to bring stuff in. So I figure, why shouldn't my branches run my whole test suite as well? Why, why do I need to wait for it to get in the master to know that it passes all the tests? So this way, as I push a branch up, it can get deployed as far up as I like, have all my screenshot testing, smoke testing, integration testing, whatever I like, run against it. So I guess there's the how. <clears throat> so this is where uh, my add-on comes in. So has anyone written add-ons or used Embassy add-ons? Cool. It's freaking amazing. I love it. It's awesome. So basically, for those that don't know, it's just an NPM package that you can build, which you install like you normally would, NPM install. And as you fire up your Embassy CLI app, it automatically boots that, that package, whether you're injecting new components into your app. Um, in this case, it's adding commands to the, the CLI. It's really powerful. So to use this, um, again, yep, npm install, ember CLI deploy, boom, done. And at the moment, this is early days, so I'm just working on this just, just by myself as I get time. Uh, having weddings and babies and stuff leaves you with less time than, used to have, than I used to. So um, <coughs> there's more to come, but at the moment we've got command to deploy your assets. So this will literally just push your assets to S3. Um, deploy index, pushes it to Redis at the moment. And then the activate is what you use to switch to a particular version and make that one the current live version. So hopefully I can show you all that in real time. First I'll have beer. Can everyone see that okay? Should I make it bigger? Silence is always good. Not. So this is literally a brand new Ember CLI app. Um, the only difference is I have just added a config file. So we'll need that in a second for Ember CLI deploy. 
So the first thing, uh, actually, let's just have a look at it, shall we? So this is what you get your bare bones out of the box Ember CLI app. Cool. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is install Ember CLI. Deploy. Uh, save dev. Right. Spell it right. <coughs> cool. So that's done. So if I type Ember help now, what you see at the bottom here is um, available commands from Ember CLI deploy. So I've injected a bunch of commands that you can run from the CLI into Ember CLI. So every time it runs, when it builds, when it serves, when it um, runs help, whatever, it hooks into that add-on. So as you can see, we've got, um, ignore that because it's not implemented, activate, deploy assets, and deploy index. So <clears throat> there's a couple of things that uh, we need. Um, this relies on config file. So basically inside a deploy directory, inside your config directory, you need to drop a file with the, the environment that you want to deploy to. In this case, we'll just say development. <coughs> it just needs to export a few things. Um, mainly the credentials for where your assets are going to go, in this case S3, um, and the credentials for where your index HTML is going to go, in this case it's Redis. Um, so we'll leave that there for now. <coughs> um, so seeing I have a bucket set up, here on S3. There's nothing in there at the moment. <coughs> so Ember London demo. Cool. So um, we also need to build our app. <coughs> what you'll also need to do in your broccoli file is <coughs> add this fingerprint prepend. So what this is going to do is prepend the location of where your assets are going to live. Um, in the index file, any images you have, um, because we're going to be storing them on S3, which is different from where the index HTML is coming from. We need to just prepend that with the, the bucket. So um, I'll, I'll show you what that actually does in a sec. So if we, we just want to build our app now, Ember Build Environment Production. So now we have our disk directory with our assets. Uh, you can see our index HTML <coughs> is pointing to the style sheet uh, at the prepended location on S3, which is where it's going to end up. Um, and that'll be the same for any references to images in your CSS. Uh, so now we've built our, built our project. So imagine this can be happening as part of Circle CI or something like that. This is not a, I'm not seeing this as a manual thing to do, but you can do it like that. Um, <coughs> we've got our credentials for S3. So we can just deploy our assets. Boom. There they are then. There. We can um, obviously put CloudFront in, that, in front of that. We can cache the crap out of it um, and just keep dumping assets in there. It's just a bucket. I don't care about cleaning it up at this point. We can just put any versions of any assets in there we like and our index files will point to the right ones. Um, Next, we want to deploy our index HTML file to a Redis instance. Now, I don't actually have one currently, um, but there is a little cool thing. Oh, I think this is pretty cool. It's a little express server that I've created. Um, has anyone seen the deploy buttons in Heroku before? Yeah, this is really cool. You can now add this. Um, if you have an app.json, this is kind of a side note. If you have an app.json, which basically explains what your Heroku instance should look like, what add-ons it has, what environment variables, Chuck one of these bad boys on there, and uh, straight away I'm into the screen to create a new instance of, of this app for myself, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's a default uh, GitHub name there. So this is all work in progress, but let's just create one called uh, London Ember Server for instance. 
So you can see I'm, I'm uh, provisioning New Relic Paper Trail, but the main one is Redis to go. So this is where our Redis store is going to be. It doesn't have to be, but um, it makes it easy for, for this at the moment. So if any of you guys wanted to use Ember CLI Deploy, all you need to do is click on that button. You create your own instance of this guy, and you've got your Redis server ready to go, and you've got your Express server that will serve your index HTML. So let's just crank one of those out. Am I going too quick or too slow? Or All right, cool. So that uh, now exists. We can view it. There's actually nothing there at the moment because there's nothing there. Um, and so what we just need to do now, we need to go back to our config. We just need to put in the credentials for that, um, that app. So um, config ember London. Server. Uh, did I not call it that? London Ember Server. All right. And here's a Redis to go URL. So we'll just take. Um, oh, I can't, I've lost it. Hold on. Redis to go URL. Nice. So we have this password, which I'm going to chuck there. Uh, right, cool, thanks. That would have caused me endless grief. Uh, green eye dot Redis to go. Green eye. God, what to do there? Oh, jeez, what is going on? There we go. Green eye dot redis to go, and we have one one nine three eight. Cool. So obviously, you just need to do this once. This is our configuration for our Redis server. So we now want to <coughs> deploy <coughs> our index. to go.com. Did I do that wrong? Green light to redis to go. What's going on there? Connection refused. Um, that's wrong. Uh, hold on. Awesome. It worked the 10 times I tried it. It's always the way, isn't it? Redis green eye. So let me bring this down a little. No, shouldn't be. I've got a typo there. Come on. Oh my God. I spelled that right, haven't I? Is it Green. Um, no, no. Just, just in case it's um, been firewalled, right. there's um, some Wi Fi coming off of this if you want right, to jump onto it. Yeah, I've had that problem before. All oh, right, okay. So, um, <coughs> Jamie's iPhone should appear at some point, hopefully. Come on. There we go. Jamie's on. Oh. Cool. That's the password there. Okay. So, like, frisbee. Five. 
Come on, baby. And we're away. Cool. Awesome. Um, so we've just pushed our index HTML file to Redis. Uh, I'm just going to activate that, and I'll, I'll explain what that all means after. Um, but essentially, what we can see. Uh, What is going on there? Hmm. Um, what is it for password? Is it D? It's not working at all. Is that the right host? Oh, did I not do that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah, man. It works every time. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. 50% of the time it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it minus P, yeah? Can I get the keys? The auth required. <laughs> this is brilliant. Port password. Okay, let's try that again. Connected there. All right, fair enough. Yeah, I'm going to remember deploy index. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you just dump the whole URL in the Canvas CLI? Um, into where? Whereabouts? Sorry, man? Just go into the CLI and then you can see the whole Redis protocol URL. But what do you mean, Nimbus CLI? Redis CLI. Oh, sorry, gotcha, gotcha, yep, cool. Like that? No. no. That's all right. Well, that's really cool. Um, all right, let's do that. I'll, I'll put my original change in. All right, so let's make a change. Um, So it actually uses the current git hash as the key. Uh, so we'll just commit that guy. So we want to build our app. Pull out assets. To play our index. Hopefully, activate our index. So this is just telling the Express server that this is the current one. No, it's not going to work. Um, what that would have done was um, marked that index as being the live one. So when I went to um, this URL, uh, that's, what I, that's what I would see, I would see my app. And so the idea being that uh, when I make some changes to my app, um, I could then deploy those and it will deploy it with a key of the current git hash, um, which is obviously different because I've made changes and I've, I've committed this. Um, and I would access it by um, putting key equals um, one, two, three, four, five, whatever my, whatever my git hash was. So the express server will look for that uh, query param if it finds one, it then goes to Redis and asks me for that version of the index HTML and serves that back to me. Um, so this is, I think this is really cool in terms of you can, you can uh, put this into staging or even production-like environments if you really want, um, and you can access your, your new features before 
um, actually making them live. Uh, then the ember activate command will literally just say activate this, this hash and make this the active one. So when I come to the root URL, that's what I get served. Sorry, I couldn't show you the actual demo. Try that. Try, try one of the keys. Huh? Try, try okay, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. No, you got nothing. I don't know what's going on there. I literally tested that like every day for the last five days and it's worked every time. <laughs> but wouldn't you know. Um, I hope I was able to get across the intent there. Um, so I guess what's next? Basically, this was sort of a first iteration. It's hard-coded to Redis, hard-coded to uh, S3. The stuff I'm doing now, and I just finished it the other night, I uh, haven't pushed it in yet, is um, I want to pull the, the, the code for the, the data stores out into adapters. So I've actually created a Redis adapter, which is another Ember CLI add-on. So there's no logic um, bound to any type of store or anything like that in Ember CLI deploy itself. So if you want to deploy to Redis for your index HTML file, all you do is install this other Ember add-on and Ember CLI deploy will actually inspect the list of add-ons that are installed and find that adapter and use it. So you can e easily create your own adapters for any data store you like. If you don't want to use Redis, you can use whatever you like. Um, and Ember CLI will automatically um, pull them in uh, as long as they sort of meet the contract and the interface. Like for the in index HTML adapter needs to have an upload method and a set current method. As long as you do that, then you're good to go. And it's literally a matter of just NPM installing that adapter and Ember CLI deploy will do the rest. Uh, more commands. So I'm going to wrap all the, the deploy assets index and activate or deploy assets and index into sort of a deploy command because that kind of makes more sense, I guess. Um, I also want to sort of add uh, versioning. So you can see the last list of versions. You can roll back any number of versions, kind of like your migrations in Rails, I guess. Um, and in the versioning also, because it's based on the Git hash, I can check out your, your, uh, your Git history and we can maybe put the Git commit next to that so you can kind of get the context of what uh, that actual version is. I uh, also want to be able to version it by branch name. So not only the Git hash, which is hard to remember, but also you can pass in the branch name as the key because if you're constantly pushing to a branch, then it's a lot easier to remember that. Um, and anything else that, that you need, really. Um, I'm just sort of adding it. I've actually had quite a few people putting pull requests in and stuff, and that's how these things become awesome by people using them. So um, if you want to have a crack at it and want to suggest anything, by all means, um, and if you want to put a pull request in, that would be awesome. Um, so questions? Yes. questions one, it seems like one missing piece is cleaning up. So if you've got an old deploy, you don't need any more. Yep. There needs to be a command to remove an old deploy. Why? And obviously, because you've got the, um, the key in all the time. Why do you need to do it? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Yet. It hasn't been a yeah. You're right. Like we could do that. Yep. But uh, yeah, if you, yeah, but um, if you're on the list of what's kind of important at the moment, that's not really. I don't mind. It's a bucket. That's what it's for. To store a whole bunch of stuff in there. That's cool. Well, you could do that. You could write an adapter to do exactly that. Um, and that's the whole point of the adapters, I guess. Um, I don't know. I guess. Um, yeah, it's an in memory store. Um, I guess you, you, you're starting to do file, file system sort of stuff, renaming files, maybe to see which one's current or move around directory structures. This is literally a key and a value. Um, and there's no reason why, why a HTML file has to be a file in a file system. Why not be just a piece of data in a, in a memory store? Um, other than that, I don't know. That's uh, kind of how Luke sort of suggested it. So that's the first path I went down to just kind of feel out the idea, see how it feels, and, and it works pretty good. I mean, I've got no problems with it. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to put in something else, you can write an adapter easy enough for oh, that so now. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I guess, sorry, Leon. Um, <clears throat> with Redis, what I also do is I, yeah, I store it there against the key, but I also store a list of the current, ver of the previous X amount of versions so you can roll back a list and all that sort of stuff. And when you start thinking of that, um, that's just another entry into Redis with a key and a list, which I can just pop in new hashes into so I can easily inspect that, see what the last 10 versions were, which um, if you start doing that in S3, it becomes a bit more of a pain. 
So I guess that's that's <coughs> a good benefit. Yeah. So just one of the, it seems to me like one of the other benefits of just this approach, i.e. using Heroku as a router effectively, um, is just reducing your Heroku bill, isn't it? You don't need any dyno per per branch that you decide to deploy. Is that sort of one of the other reasons behind it? Yeah, it could be. If <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I hadn't really thought down that path, so, but yeah, it sounds like, yeah, you do, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, Jamie. Um, not where we work currently, but that's the plan, um, and I'm sort of using it as I, for my own stuff, as I am kind of writing it, um, but if we get time, we will be using it but I've actually had a couple of people um, raise pull requests and, and issues that are using it in production which is kind of cool but um, that, is, that is a plan in the very near future yeah Can we have a look huh Can we no have a look? no it doesn't matter because <laughs> anyone else got any questions <laughs> <laughs> no cool all right so uh, some of the links um, that's embassy I deploy you can npm install it this was the express server if you wanted to use it, um, fork it, change it, whatever. And that's just a small link to Luke Melia's presentation. And I've been Aaron, so thanks for listening. Woo! <laughs>